Hi, what's your name? I'm Darcy Doherty. Darcy, good to know you. Well, it's good to be here, Chris. Why don't we start off and give me a little background on yourself. Okay. I've been a lifelong learner, so education's been important. I have a BA in Management and Leadership from Judson University and an MBA from Keller Graduate School of Management Chicago. Mm -hmm. I got both of those while in the midst of my career, so made for kind of a challenging, demanding schedule for a few years, but great learning experience. When you can take what you're getting in the classroom, apply it the next day in the workplace, it benefited not only myself, but everyone around me in the organization. Mm -hmm. So it was an exciting time think, of my life. I think also you bring real world experience to the classroom. Well, so that's it makes true. It more meaningful, yeah. And I found both of those have benefited me in the two major areas that I've been in in my career, both in not for profit trade association management and also managing for profit businesses. I've also been a small business owner. Okay, so you've, you've had a broad range of experience. I have worn a lot of hats. All right. Well, in all of that, if I ask you about your leadership style, your management style, I mean, I mean, how do you get the most out of people? How do you lead? Well, probably by relating what others have said about me, I can think of probably three key points. First of all, visionary. I have the ability to um, uh, take a quick, a quick assessment of what is, mm -hmm. and then be able to anticipate and track trends. And you put the two together, you can help organizations, business create vision goals and objectives and then I can take an initiative and create it from scratch or take one already existing through an extreme makeover for better results. Okay. Right. I've been called a shepherd of change. Most people, Chris, don't like change and they don't like it because it takes them out of their comfort zone. Right. So one of my gifts is being able to help people get comfortable with being uncomfortable thereby embracing change for the desired outcomes. Okay. And being a servant leader, I believe in results through people. And in order to do that, you've got to have the right environment and the right tools to help That's people right. do their best. Yeah. You can take a very creative person and work with them, put more structure in their world so they can do their best work and get it done on time. And you can take a very structured and traditional employee and help them be more flexible to get better results. You put those two personalities together in the right environment, results can be magic. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, give me an example. I mean, look back in your career and share with me uh, uh, maybe an achievement where that's really worked. Wow. Um, I have had a lot of proud moments in my career. I've been a spokesperson both electronically and in print for mm -hmm. organizations and had a column in the Chicago Sun-Times, for example. I have been a registered local, state, and national lobbyist. I have lectured and trained internationally, and I've created 501c3 foundations and raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for them. But if I had to pick one that uh, would really show all of my, my skill set uh, in accomplishing something, I was hired as CEO of a 115-year-old organization that had merged the year before with another entity but only on paper. They had separate accounting system, fiscal years, locations, staffs. It was really a very conflicted culture. Right. I also walked in the door and inherited a $450,000 deficit budget that was projected for that year, and they were right on track for making it. So I get my arms around a lot of, a lot of issues very quickly, and I took that deficit down for the remainder of the fiscal year to half of what they projected. I got them into profit the second year and they remained in profit the remaining time I was there for the whole 10 years. Quite an account. Yeah. It was an exciting opportunity. I had to rebuild infrastructure, create a whole new culture, um, take an organization uh, and triple the size of it, mm -hmm. and one that was 80% dependent on annual dues income down to 17% dependent over a 10 year period of time. Now that was an accomplishment. Yeah, very good. Very good. I uh, certainly didn't do that alone. There were staff and leadership that we all worked together and, and uh, had that uh, kind of energy environment. But a lot of the key to that was purchasing or creating for-profit entities that brought in a continual revenue stream. And when you have a dues-dependent organization that can be liberated from having that as a major source of income, it is amazing what the organization can do in turn for its members. 
So that was probably very exciting. When I left the organization, I left it debt free also. Okay, very good. Can't beat that. No. Well, I guess bottom line, you know, companies always have several good candidates for good mm -hmm. positions. Mm -hmm. And let's say you're one of those finalists. Why should they hire you? Passion and energy. I have it in everything I do. It's important to me. One of the things I've really enjoyed about my volunteer, working with volunteer leaders is people don't volunteer today, Chris, unless they really care about something, have a passion for it, think they can make a difference. Yeah. And when you have passion in an organization or a business, it creates a synergy, a synergy where the whole is greater than any sum of the parts. And that synergy can get results like nothing else can. So that's important to me and something I'm excited about. I guess that whether you're trying to improve your bottom line or you are looking to take your organization to the next level, mm -hmm. I'm your person because I'm an expert at both. And I believe you when you say that. Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you for your time. It was good to be here.